the most, there's, there's all kinds of ways to teach percentages. There's all kinds of ways to do a percent. Multiply this decimal, blah, blah, blah. There's all kinds of methods. But the method I like teaching is the one that makes the most logical sense of what a percent means. Now, in the yesterday's notes on the video, I defined what a percent was. Can either one of you three tell me what a percent li literally means? Literally. What is a percent? Right. So let me put number four on hold right now. I'm going to come back to number four. So what Moreno said is it's any fraction out of 100. Uh, if I have, a, let's say, a piece of, uh, how, about a, how about a burger? Don't laugh at my drawing. Don't laugh. Let's say I eat half the burger. That's how much I ate. Or I also ate this much. Because these are all fractions that mean the same thing. I ate two-fourths of that burger. I can express my eating of that burger with all these ways, all these kinds of fractions. They mean the same amount. But what Moreno just said, if I express it as a percent, I'm going to express it as a burger chopped up into 100 pieces. Right? This is a percent. It's just a fraction out of 100 pieces. That's, that's all it means. I'll, I want to take the mystery out of percentages in your mind from this day forward to the day you die. A percent literally means nothing more, nothing less than out of 100. Nothing more. Get, just stop it now. Understand that there's no mystery to it. It just means a fraction out of 100 percent, out of 100 pieces. Now, with that knowledge, check this out. There's a percent symbol. That means out of 100. So I know when I solve this problem, I know one of the fractions is going to be out of 100 because that's what percent means. And this method of solving percentages I call the formula. Did I mention that in the video? It's called the formula. It's, it's just a beautiful thing because it works for any percent problem that you ever come across for the rest of your life. Ask Mr. Sandoval, he's a master of it already. That's why he's gonna do the challenge problem correctly. Are you done yet? <laughs> Let me know. Um, so, let's see here. What the heck was that? Um, 100 always goes there because we're dealing with percent. Whatever comes after the word of goes right here because that's the total of whatever we're dealing with. So the word of, be on the lookout for whatever comes after the word of, it's going to go right there. And then the percent goes right here because that's what percent means. More than I just read that to us a little while ago. And then the part goes right here, the part out of the whole. The part out of the whole thing. And we're done. We just cross multiply and it becomes this dirt cheap easy equation. Let me show you. It's just a beautiful way of doing percentages because it makes the most, uh, most sense out of percentages. Watch. Um, what comes after the word of here in this problem? One more time? Thank you. There's of 20, so 20 is a whole. What's the percent in this problem? Thank you. And then the part is what's unknown. I think two is, if you did it in your mind. I, I can't do it in my head. Some people are quick with math. I'm not quick. I wasn't a math major in college. You know what I studied in college? Sandoval, what did I say in college? Um, I know it's false. Starts with a what letter? P. Good. Technology? With a P, not a T, sorry. Oh, I heard, I heard P. Let me pause this. I was a philosophy major. Um, 
But I took enough mathematics to be able to teach at the high school level. I took up the calculus because I was a, I was a pre-med major before a philosophy major. So all that to say, why am I sharing that? I'm not good with math. I can't do quick calculations. I understand math and the structure of it. I suppose that puts me in a better position to teach it, um, believe it or not. But I can't do what I think Rodriguez said. It was two, huh? Who said it? You said it's two? Did you do the work or you just did it in your head? Kind of just the work. Good. Okay, so once we have this, this set up, like the video showed you yesterday, we're just going to cross multiply. The way to solve for an unknown in what we call, this is called a proportion, a fraction equaling another fraction. We just cross multiply. Like it, and it, it turns into this dirt cheap easy equation that you've seen like in junior high school. Watch. 100 times x is 100x. And then 20 times 10, I want to say is 200 if my coffee has kicked in. Sometimes my coffee doesn't kick in. I need more coffee, by the way. Uh, yeah. There's an easy equation. 100 times x equals 200. Back in junior high, math one days, back in the day, from your old school you came from, you, they taught you some basic equations. I know they did. Don't even give me that. What do I do to both sides of the equation to get x by itself here? Thank you. I want to get x alone, so divide by the number next to x. x is 2. Done. That makes sense, huh? Think of that burger. If I ate two pieces out of the 20 pieces of that burger that I drew earlier, it's the same amount in my stomach as if I ate 10 out of 100 pieces of that burger. It's the equivalent fraction. It all makes sense. Let's try another one. There we go. Erase my burger. Number five. Ten is what percent? Of twenty. What the this looks like number four. Isn't it the same? It's not the same, huh? Same numbers, but I worded it different, and that makes all the difference. On number four, number four, I gave you the percent, right? It was 10. Number five, I'm asking, you going to write this down, Rodriguez? Or just... Number five, I'm asking for the percent. What is the percent? Four, the percent was given. Now with the way I tweaked it and worded it, now the percent's unknown. You done? Hit it. Huh? Keep trying. So 10 is what percent of 20? It's rock and roll. Same numbers, but I just worded it different now. Hmm. All right, let's go right to my proportion, the formula. Let's go right to the formula. Right to the formula. There we go. Phone the way right now, Rodriguez? Unless you have a calculator. Um, what goes on the bottom right? 100. By the way, you could put it over here if you wanted to. It doesn't matter. As long as one of the fractions is out of 100, you're good to go. But I, it was my habit. I learned in the seventh grade, just put it right there. Did I ever tell you the story of my seventh grade teacher? Yeah. Who taught me that? Yeah. He was a scary, his name was Mr. Van Cott. He was a big Dutchman. Just a huge, huge, everyone was scared of him. He was huge and he was intimidating. And all the teachers would send their problem kids to his class because he was just like, he was like the disciplinarian of the school. And he was a math teacher in my junior high. I was uh, sixth grade. And he taught me the, 
And back then, I thought I was going to be a baseball player. But now I'm a math teacher, and now I'm teaching the same stuff he taught me way back in the seventh grade. It's called the formula. He called it the formula because it works for every single percent problem you'll ever come across for the rest of your life. No matter how it's worded, boom, this works. So check it out. Let's start filling in the, the, the spots. You only have three to choose. This is always 100, so you only have three, three slots to fill. Depending on the word problem. Okay? What's going to go over 100? Is, does it say 20%? I don't know. Because remember, out of a, what does percent mean? Out of 100, huh? Go ahead, what? Right, look at is what? That's the question. What percent? So that means that's the unknown. Thank you. What always comes out on, on the bottom there? The biggest number. Whatever comes after the word of. Exactly. So 20 is going to go here again. And now this time, what well, the part then is 10. Ten out of twenty is what percent? Fifty, huh? This is I'm bad with mental math, like I said. I'm gonna do the math though. Cross multiply. Yeah. So twenty X, here we go. Remember this dirt cheap easy equation now that results? 10 times 100, I want to say is 1,000 if my coffee has kicked in. Could be wrong, though. Rodriguez, what do I do to both sides of the equation to get x by itself? If you don't know, that's fine. Good try. Perez, save the date. What do I do to both sides to get x by itself? Nice. So Perez is a veteran, so he's not going to take notes with us. What he's going to do is he's going to try that challenge problem that he failed to do yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> X is 50. So just right now, just work on the challenge problem, and you get the DMT. That's what Santa Ball, the veteran behind you, is still trying to do. See if we can do that. Nice! It works. That formula works. Okay? Look at number, our last example now. Watch this. Number six. Watch this. Ten is twenty percent of what number? I'm using the same numbers again. I'm just rewording it. Ten is twenty percent of what number? Go ahead and use the formula. I'll give you about a couple of minutes. Try to fill in the formula at least. Don't, don't do the whole problem, but just fill in the formula. Um, all right, formula time, right? I'll use Dodger Blue since they're going to win the World Series. They're going to beat the Giants tomorrow in game five. Mark my words. If they lose, I'm not coming to school. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right. 100 goes here. I can teach my grandchild to do that. That's not a big deal. So we just have three slots now. Here, here, and here. What's the percent? Did I give a percent on this one? Thank you. Thank you. So that literally means 20 out of 100 pieces. That's what percent means. What, a, what comes after the word of, Moreno? What number? We don't know what comes after the word of. That's the unknown. Exactly. You see how it works? Tens the part. So let's, re let's recap real quick. The first example we did today, the unknown, the unknown was up here. This was unknown. The part. 
On number five, the unknown was a percent. And on number six, the unknown is a whole. So I'm giving you all the different kinds of scenarios and the formula works for any scenario. So now I'm just going to cross multiply and we're rocking and rolling. Here, here. Let's see, 20 times x, I want to say it's 20x. 10 times 100 is 1,000. Nice. Divide by 20. That looks familiar. Is that 50 again? Yep. So 50. Here's what you're going to do now. On C13, right here, choose any one from, look at from 1 through 12, choose any one you want to do well, on a piece of paper and then post it to Padlet. Now, when you post to Padlet, right here, put your name as a title, your picture of your paper. And then tell me what the problem told you. For me, 5 is 12% of 40. 12.5% of 40. Just run the near, if you're dealing with cash, run the nearest second decimal and not run the nearest set first decimal. Uh, you can ask me if you forgot how to do that. It was tri so right now you're going to pick one. Go right here to Padlet. Choose any one of these problems you want to do on your own. And then you're going to post a picture to it. Get big busy. That's for your R stamp. And then once for your P stamp, you're going to do these problems. 1 through 14. Look at all these. You're just going to use a formula. And then here you're going to use a formula too. If you forgot how to do area, I'll, I'll refresh you how to do area. But look at what percent of the region is shaded. So take the area of everything and what's the, the parts that are shaded and make the, the formula. Part to whole, part to whole. Here, you're just going to use a formula for these. Whatever comes up the word of in the lower right, all that jazz. But at least try the, try a Padlet post for now, and I'll be helping you. Get on the market side, go. Did you get that challenge problem yet? Uh, you're back down Good track. Wait. They say five thousand dollars. Yeah. That's cool. At a restaurant. <laughs> it keeps a lot of hits. Did you not the nice that one? Oh, it's a nice set. Yeah, yeah. Good try though. I thought it was a restaurant. <laughs> By the way, we're on a shortened day today. Are you aware of that? Do you have one of these on your binder? On the schedule? So we're on a shortened day today, just so you know. We're going to end in about 15 minutes. So keep going.
3600? Yeah. Yeah. So an equation is like a balance, like a scale. You know what a scale balance is? We do where we do the yeah, one. Equal weight, no. Right. So if I divide this side by 15, then I'm like this now. Now I have to do it over here. Now it's still equal because I did the same thing to both sides. And look at that's gone. 15 divided by 15 is just one, huh? Look at so I have one x. But I don't need to put the one because there's always a one in front of a variable. So x is alone on the, the left side of the equation, on, on the left side of the balance. And now let's see what happens over here. What's 3600 divided by 15? There it is. There's your answer. You got it. 